RSP stands for Reg. Reg. Wow. 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 Hello, everybody. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. Here for the first time, by popular demand, we have a lesson in personal finance. For today, and today only, unless I make another off-brand video, you can call me Damsel in Dallas. What is a TFSA? What is an RSP? What is a high interest savings account? How do I get started with investing? These are questions that I get asked so often that I feel the need to give my two cents. I'm gonna do that today by defining the terms I have up on the screen. Before we get started, I do need to give a disclaimer that I am not a financial professional. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm simply sharing my personal experience and knowledge. So I do encourage you to learn more about the topics that I mentioned. Talk about them with a trusted financial professional before you take action. I will be leaving government and bank links in the description below. So let's talk about interest. <laughs> When we borrow money for a loan, a mortgage, a credit card debt that we rack up by making too many Sephora purchases, we usually pay an additional percentage of the amount that we borrowed as a cost for borrowing it. This is interest. We can also earn interest when we lend money. Putting your money in a savings account is basically letting the bank borrow your money. You can earn interest simply by opening a savings account and keeping some money in it. The interest rate that you'll earn on this money depends on the type of account that you open, and we'll get to this later. Interest is a money-making money, honey. It's important to know that interest earned on your money actually counts as income. And in Canada, we have to pay taxes on all the income that we earn. Now, before you get upset about the government stealing all your hard-earned money, remember that there are ways that you can earn interest tax-free. This can be done through registered accounts. A registered account is a special kind of bank account that is registered with the government. TFSA and RRSP are two common examples of registered accounts. Now, a lot of people take advantage of these accounts because they do offer ways to earn some interest tax-free, but there are also certain rules and restrictions that you have to follow. Unregistered bank accounts are more flexible, but you also have to pay tax on any interest that you earn. So. All right, so now that you understand interest and registered accounts, let's talk about the types of registered accounts, starting with RRSP. Registered Retirement Savings Plan. Not to be confused with RESP, which stands for Registered Education Savings Plan, which I will not be talking about today. If you are a Canadian adult who earns income through employment or self-employment and files taxes every year, then you are registered to, you are eligible to open a registered retirement savings plan to help you save for retirement. RSPs allow you to invest your pre-tax employment or self-employment earnings and earn interest on them tax-free. Then when you make withdrawals from the account, you have to pay tax on those withdrawals. Besides helping you save for retirement, one of the main advantages of an RSP is that you can deduct your contributions against your earnings. So you can pay less tax now if you contribute some of your earnings to an RSP. So let's say you make $100,000 a year in employment income before taxes. If you contribute $10,000 that year to your RRSP, then your earnings that you have to pay tax on will only be 90,000. So you're gonna pay less in taxes. Every year there's a limit on how much of your income, which percentage you can contribute to your RRSP. When you retire and begin taking money out of your RRSP, you will be taxed on it at the rate that corresponds to your income level at that time. Definitely more details to know about RRSPs, so please make sure you fully understand them before opening one and taking action. Now let's talk about another type of registered account, TFSA. If you are a Canadian human over the age of 18, some may call this an adult, you are eligible to open a TFSA. TFSA stands for Tax-Free Savings Account. Pretty straightforward, a savings account where you don't have to pay taxes on the interest income that you earn, if you use it properly. Here's how to use it. Every year, the Canadian government releases a TFSA dollar contribution limit. This is a dollar amount that you're allowed to put into your TFSA that year. The limit differs from year to year, but in 2020, it was $6,000. Two important things to note about this limit. It accumulates every year and it starts accumulating the year you turn 18, even if you don't have a TFSA account open at that time. For example, let's say I turned 18 in the year 2018. 
oh to be young. Here are the contribution limits from the years 2018 to 2020. Let's say I decide to open a TFSA in the year 2019, one year after the year I turned 18. My contribution limit at the time that I open it would be the sum of all the contribution limits in the years since the year I turned 18. So in this case, it would be 5,500 plus 6,000, which is 11,500. I can contribute up to this amount, but I have to make sure that I don't surpass this amount in the year 2019. Otherwise, I could pay some pretty hefty penalties. Now, let's say I decide to put in $10,000 in 2019. How much would my contribution limit be the following year in 2020? Well, it would be 2020's contribution limit plus whatever I have left over that I did not use yet from previous years. In my case, I have that 1500 left over from 2018 and 2019 plus 2020's contribution limit, which is 6,000. So in 2020, I have a total contribution allotment of $7,500. Okay, so now that we know about putting it in, let's talk about taking it out. Good news, you can withdraw money from your TFSA tax-free at any time. You can even put that money back into your TFSA, recontribute it, as long as you have enough contribution space left. Going back to our example, let's say that in 2020, I max out my TFSA by putting in that last 7,500 of contribution space that I had left. Now I need $1,000 because I want to buy a car. I can do that. I can take out that 1,000. However, I have to wait until the following year to put it back in because I've already met my contribution limit at the time um, that I took it out. So I don't have any more contribution space to put in that thousand, even though it was already in there. Doesn't matter. Gotta wait till next year or any year after to put it back in. Please make sure you fully understand how TFSAs work before opening one. Speaking of which, how would you go about opening a TFSA or an RSP for that matter? Hmm, how would you? Good news. For the most part, it can be as simple as opening any other type of bank account, like a checking or savings account, and you could even do it online. You can think of opening a registered bank account as opening a savings or investment account with a special label that says that that account is registered as an RRSP or a TFSA or an RESP or whatever kind of registered account you're going for. So I can choose to open a regular savings account or I can choose to open a TFSA savings account. Same underlying account type, but different ways of using it. One would be registered as a TFSA and follow the TFSA uh, regulations and tax advantages and the other one would just be a regular non-registered savings account. You can even have multiple TFSA or multiple RRSP accounts as long as you follow your contribution limits. So I can open a TFSA savings account and a TFSA investment account. I just have to carefully track how much I'm contributing to each of them to make sure that I don't pass the limit. Personally, I've only held one TFSA account at a time, and that way I can easily track my contributions and make sure I don't pass the limit. Now let's talk about the two most common account types that are generally used for RSPs or TFSAs. The first is a high interest savings account. Pretty self-explanatory. Simply a savings account that offers you a high interest rate. I put high in the little bunny quote things, bunny quote things, because it's typically not higher than 2%. Oftentimes it's actually much lower than that. So it doesn't really seem very high, but you work with what you can. Most financial institutions have their own versions of high interest savings account products. So it's just a matter of picking the one that works best for you. One thing to be aware of is that these accounts usually offer promotional rates that expire later. Um, so don't be fooled, read the fine print, make sure you understand how the interest will be calculated before you open that account. All right, so the other one is an investment account. <laughs> An investment account is an account where you can put money in and use it to purchase assets such as stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Similar to the high interest savings accounts, each bank offers their own investment account product. So you just have to choose the one that's best for you. You can manage it yourself or you can hire someone to manage it for you. Personally, I started with Questrade, which is an online brokerage, and it's a great option for young investors because it has pretty low fees for trading assets. Another very popular option for young investors is Wealthsimple, which is an investment management service. If you have no idea what kind of assets you want to invest in, Wealthsimple is a great option that can take care of that for you at a pretty great price. It is very common to open an investment account as an RSP or TFSA to avoid paying taxes on any of the income that you earn through it. 
So there you have it folks, a basic introduction to saving and investing in Canada. If you like what you saw and you would like an encore of my performance as a damsel in Dallas, then uh, just you know request it below and we'll see what we can do. All right, now go make some money. Thank <laughs> you.